Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to talk to you about this little gem right here. It's called I'm Thinking of Ending Things by, I'm pretty sure it's Ian Reed. I first heard about this book on BookTube. It was on a bookshelf tour and the booktuber said that this book scared him. Like, it, he, I think he said it was the only book to terrify him. And so I knew right then I had to track it down and pick it up. I'm a thriller, horror, suspense fan. So you need to know that up front. You're not going to like this book if you're not into being scared. <laughs> this book promised to scare me and it scared the bejesus out of me. I was officially creeped out. This is a creep-tastic novel. All right, let me just stop raving about it and actually tell you what the stupid thing's about. How about that? So the book is about a boyfriend and girlfriend somewhere maybe around graduate school-ish age, though it's never really specified. But the book is about them traveling, taking a small road trip to his family's farm. And that's about it. So they've been dating for several weeks, a couple of months maybe at the most. And he tells her it's important to him that she meet his family. And so she agrees to go along and she's fascinated by meeting his family because she kind of wants to see where he came from. But at the same time, right away, since she's narrating the book for us, we realize that she is thinking of ending things. She, she's thinking about it while they're in the car together. Like, she's pretty sure she's gonna end this relationship. Because of just that, there's already a weird, I mean, you're just fascinated. Why would she go? What's gonna happen? Like, oh, I bet this girl's gonna wish she had. You know, those kinds of thoughts are going through uh, your mind as, as you're reading this. So it is told in first person from the girlfriend's perspective. There are things going on with her. She, she admits to waking up and seeing a man standing outside of her window when she was younger. She admits to receiving calls, anonymous calls from somebody who keeps, they say the same thing over and over and over again about how there's just one more question. You know, so she's, got some creepy things going on and you know they get to his parents place and it's creepy as hell too there's all this there's all these dots in this book that you can't connect and that's what makes it so terrifying the unknown is terrifying and as soon as you as soon as you know the circumstances as soon as you can put something into context it's no longer scary and you can't do that with this book until the last page. I'm not even kidding. There's these random elements that could be benign enough, could be inconsequential, but the fact that we can't determine that means that they're hanging out there in the great unknown and that adds a level of fear to what they could mean. What are they? You know, like, like slippers outside of a door. She, she left her slippers outside of the bathroom. And when she went in there, they were facing one way and she came out and they're facing the other way. That in itself is not scary, but since it comes behind seeing a man standing outside of a window or sitting in her backyard, not doing anything or like, getting all of these anonymous phone calls that are coming from her own telephone number. Like, I mean, then slippers magically flipping around, it, you know, kind of becomes a little scary. A basement, a basement is not scary until there's things about it that can't be explained. That's what made this book successful at creeping me the hell out. If you read this, you're not going to know why. You're not going to know why this stuff is happening because it's so out of context that it doesn't make sense. These things that are happening don't make sense. And the, the people making the decisions, their decisions don't make sense. 
So you're struggling to make sense of these things. You're not going to be able to. And only if you could, could you even begin to maybe guess what's behind all of this stuff. In fact, while I was reading this book, I was thinking to myself, all of these things can't possibly be related. If the author ends this book without explaining all of this unexplained stuff, I'm going to be mad. But that's not, that didn't happen. Um, there is understanding. <laughs> you do come to some understanding by the end of this book that makes all of that other weird shit not make sense, but makes it acceptable. It it's acceptable to the reader. There's nothing worse than reading a book and having a set of circumstances stand out to you and then have them be unexplained or unaccounted for by the end of the book. That's unacceptable. Like you can't, why was that even that? Why was that happening? This book doesn't do that. <laughs> I wish so much that I wasn't opposed to posting reviews with spoilers because I, I want to tell you what happens in this book so badly, but I'm not gonna, I want to do though so badly because it's crazy. Um, uh, something that I definitely didn't see coming. I kind of wondered, um, just from my experience with similar events or, or, similar stories out there in the world or just having read a lot of thrillers and twisty books and I kind of wondered at a few things and I wasn't exactly right. I wasn't close to being right, but I wasn't entirely wrong either. <laughs> Have I, am I confusing you yet? I'll let me make it simple for you. Read this book. You definitely need to read this book. It's only 210 pages, so it goes really quick. I read this book in a couple of hours, um, maybe three hours, just over last night and this morning. Um, it was super easy to finish this book. And you it's not the kind of book that you want to put down. It's the kind of book that you want to keep reading just so you can find some clarity, just so things will make sense. The narrator of this book, the girlfriend, she's never named. We don't have a name for her. It is written in first person from her perspective and I related to this character a lot. I enjoyed reading about this character because there's so much philosophy and conceptual, um, conceptual like conversations, thoughts in this book, the narrator kind of thinks like I think, <laughs> kind of can take one little seed of something and have a 20 minute inner dialogue about it. That's how I think. I have a 24 hour inner dialogue. It never stops. And that helped with this book as, as well. I found the narrator to be very relatable and I was interested in those over the top philosophical questions and conversations that she was having with her boyfriend in a car alone. And I just, it, I was like, yeah, this is, this cool. This is the kind of crap I think about. This is the kind of stuff I waste all my time thinking about all while doing something that there's really no point in doing if you're going to end things like, I don't know. It's just an interesting little, read. There's a whole bunch of psychological, um, stuff that we delve into just through conversation. It's super interesting. This is just such a, such an interesting little book. Uh, so the first thing about written about the book on the back, it says you will be scared, but you won't know why that's exactly true. That is 100% spot on. You will be scared but you won't have any idea what's going on. There's nothing really to scare you. There's nothing, there's no monster chasing you. There's no serial killer. There's, people aren't dying. There's like nothing to scare you, but you're scared. That's what's phenomenal about this. That it like shines a spotlight on who we are as readers 
and who we are as people when it comes to being afraid, being illogically afraid of something or having a, having that spidey sense that says something is not right. I mean, you can really, if you want to get nerdy about it like I do, um, you can really <laughs> hone in on some of your own psychological things, some of your own beliefs about logic and menace and fight or flight and stuff like that. So, you know, I it's just interesting. It's interesting. It's scary. You will be scared, but you won't know why. An ingeniously twisted nightmare road trip through the fragile psyches of two young lovers. Yes. Creepy yet enthralling. Packs a big psychological punch with a twisty storyline and an ending that will leave readers breathless. That's true. I, when I finally figured out what was going on, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, <gasps> oh, fuses suspense with philosophy, psychology, and horror. That's true. And another thing that Publishers Weekly says is this book invites multiple readings and it does. Like you read it so confused the first time that once you finally know what's going on, you're like, oh. And it's the kind of thing that you want to go back and read to see what you missed or to see exactly how all of the dots connect and what clues there were to the ending before you got there. So this is a book, unlike the last one <laughs> that I reviewed, this is a book that I want to keep on my shelf. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to love it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, I am going to keep this. I will recommend this book and suggest this book to any fan of th thriller, suspense, or horror, but I'm keeping this for my own. And I, I, I will probably reread it. I, I started out, I actually read the first chapter out loud to my fiance because it is so just different. It's so different. Ian Reed had, this is Ian Reed's first novel. He was an award-winning writer of nonfiction prior to writing this novel. And I think that that helped as well because I think that sometimes first time writers, especially first time writers of a completely different genre than they're used to, they don't respect the rules and they don't, they don't live within them. And because of that, they can actually write something groundbreaking and something that changes the game entirely. I think that people get used to books, get used to style, get used to the market and write for the market, right? This book was not written for the market. This book was written by a man who just wanted to write a novel and he said it was very difficult and, and you know, it is unlike any book I've ever read. And I think it has to do with him being inexperienced in fiction writing. So that's a great thing. Like I, I appreciate that a lot. Anyways, you should definitely read this book. Like I said, it'll take you, if you can read for a couple of hours uninterrupted, you could probably get this book done. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. I really don't. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to read it. Let me know if you're not going to read it so I can convince you to read it. If you want to know more, check out the links that I left below or ask me any questions you might have down there in the comments. And give this video a thumbs up if you had a good time. I had a good time reading this book. This book gets big thumbs up from me. That's all I got, I think. That's all I got. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you're tempted. And thank you so much for watching and considering this book. And I will see you all very soon.